Last weekend, we got new details on how Jared Kushner and the ex-president benefited from Saudi money since leaving the White House. Kushner, who had cozy relations with Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman and led the push for his father-in-law to prioritize a relationship with the Saudis, including making it the first foreign trip, received $2 billion from a fund chaired by the Crown Prince known as MBS. Nice work if you can get it. The ex-president also benefited from Saudi-backed tournaments at his golf course and a Saudi real estate company's agreement to build a Trump hotel in Oman. It sounds like a perfect opportunity for the House Oversight Committee to investigate whether a former president, his senior White House advisor, peddled government access to enrich themselves, something that committee chairman James Comer was asked about Sunday. The $2 billion investment in Kushner's funds from the Saudis. We know the president, uh, former President Trump uh, has also received funds related to the Saudi golf tour. Senator Ron Wyden says these financial entanglements deserve investigation. Will you be investigating that as well? I think everything's on the table. Look, we're investigating Joe Biden. <laughs> Is everything on the table, really? The ranking member of that committee, Jamie Raskin of Maryland, has now renewed a push request, a prior request, to to Kushner for documents related to, quote, reports you improperly traded on your government position while carrying out the Trump administration's foreign policy in the Middle East. Raskin this week assigned, asked Comer to co-sign the letter. Congressman Raskin joins me now to tell us Comer's response. Congressman, good to have you on. Um, so what is the status of this inquiry in your House committee? Well, the inquiry began in June of last year when we demanded these documents from Jared Kushner. We've had no substantial compliance. He's been, um, you know, completely dodging uh, our effort to get at the truth of it. Uh, we've been working on it for the last eight months, but now all of these new details are out. The $2 billion, the fact that he started his new company the day after the Trump administration ended. Um, you know, 99 percent of the money, as far as we can tell, comes from Saudi Arabia. The uh, the advisory board to the Saudi sovereign investment fund said, don't do it. Don't put a dime in this. These people are untested. They just created their business. But Mohammed bin Salman overrode them and said, we're putting it in with Jared Kushner. So the question for us is, what did Saudi Arabia get? Did it get protection for all the human rights abuses, for the war against Yemen, for the blockade uh, against Qatar, and for specifically protection for uh, the homicidal crown prince when he ordered the assassination, kidnapping, dismemberment of Jamal Khashoggi, which you'll recall the um, you know, the, the Turkey and the CIA said uh, clearly was done by Saudi agents and Donald Trump and Kushner helped to cover the whole thing up. Trump bragged to Bob Woodward. I you know, we saved his ass. Um, and Meaning ben when Salman. Pompeo went over to Saudi Arabia. Yeah, he saved the crown prince. And when Pompeo went over there, he said, remind him that he owes us. Tell him that he owes us. So. We want to know exactly what did Saudi Arabia get. We know that Jared Kushner got $2 billion out of it, a $25 million management fee every year, which is basically like an annuity on a billion dollars. Um, so that's a very serious business that raises profound problems about conflict of interest and indeed the Constitution and the Emoluments Clause, which says that nobody who's in federal government, a high-ranking White House official like uh, Jared Kushner or the president can take anything from a prince, a king or a foreign state without the express permission of Congress. And Congress never authorized any of this. Yeah, I want to just read from The New York Times, because this this element, the, the thing that always is, I mean, it, it looks super sketchy right from the outside. Like, obviously, U.S., you know, U.S. policy under Donald Trump was very favorable towards the Saudis. It was the first trip. There was the Khashoggi thing. So it all looks not great. But the Times reporting on the internal red flags of the Saudi investment arm in this is really striking. So I just want to read this because you mentioned it, just to, to ground it a little bit. A panel that screens investments for the main Saudi farm, sovereign wealth fund cited concerns about the proposed deal with Mr. Kushner's newly formed private equity firm, Affinity Partners, previously undisclosed documents show. These objections included the inexperience of the Affinity Fund management. The possibility the kingdom would be responsible for the bulk of the investment and risk due diligence on fledgling firms' operations that found them unsatisfactory in all aspects. But days later, the full board, led by Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, overruled the panel. So this is not 
like there's a paper trail here that this was a wired deal for the former senior advisor and the son-in-law of the ex-president who had been quite favorable to the South. Yeah, and, you know, all that I said to Chairman Comer was, you know, I was glad what he said on Sunday, which is he didn't disagree with our concerns about this. Let's write together to try to get the answers from Jared Kushner, who has otherwise been stonewalling us for an eight-month period. His lawyer said they had nothing to hide. Well, then give us the documents so we can figure it out. I mean, he was a high-ranking official in the Trump White House. He wasn't just a relative. He wasn't just somebody in his family. He was leading U.S. foreign policy in, in the, the Middle, Middle East. East. And we yes. want to know what what did Saudi Arabia get out of it such that he felt it was so important to rush back to America from Saudi Arabia to start his firm the day after the Trump administration ended and then walk away with this $2 billion, which was carefully hidden for a while, but now it has come to light? You know, I, I think when I had you, I, I think I saw the headlines about this inquiry from you um, and thought, like, well, that's kind of a clever troll, right? Like, they're going after Hunter Biden. Uh, for for what they say is influence peddling, and this is sort of a, a a sort of good gotcha. But what I'm hearing from you now is like, no, you think you think this deserves inquiry, and you maybe think there's a universe in which it's something that, on a bipartisan basis, the committee could do. I mean, this is the central thing. We're talking about people who are in government, who hold high office, who are responsible for specific policy jurisdiction. Here, Middle Eastern foreign policy, then coming back with a $2 billion investment in a private equity fund from Saudi Arabia. So whatever people want to talk about in terms of, well, what should the family members of presidents be doing who are not in the government, that strikes me as quite secondary to this right. central problem that we've got to deal with. And there's no running away from it. Quickly for you, finally, um, uh, Mark Meadows, uh, CNN's reporting, has been uh, uh, subpoenaed by Jack Smith. Obviously, uh, we don't at NBC have that. We haven't matched that, although kudos to CNN for breaking that, if it's true. Um, what do you think about that? Well, look, he, he's obviously a material witness. And I come back to, I think, one of the first things I said to you after January 6th happened, which is, the highest ranking people in the country, like the president and the chief of staff, the people who've sworn an oath of office to uphold and defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic, should be the very first people to come out and tell everything they know about that's exactly right. what happened. And that's true of Mark Meadows. Congressman Jamie Raskin. Thank you very much, sir. Have a good night.